controllers on PC. This is the Miller Report, and quite frankly, my rapport is low today because we still live in a world where people will whine and complain about whether a mouse and keyboard is actually better than a controller when it comes to personal computing or PC gaming. What difference does it actually make to you? Does the fact that somebody out there is playing with a controller affect your life? Are you sitting there on your mouse and keyboard setup and all of a sudden you collapse because the thought of it is too much to bear? Absolutely not. That's not true. And if you said it was true, you're a liar. Go and get a real problem, like bankruptcy. With that said, there are some experiences on PC that are actually better to play with a pad than a mouse and keyboard. So here's exactly that. 10 personal computing games that are better to play with a pad than a mouse and keyboard. Engage. Number 10, World of Warcraft, AKA World of Nerds. Forget your damn waz, which sounds like an awful pop band from the 80s, when you're preparing to lose yourself in World of Nerds and pretend you're an orc or something, you're gonna have a much better time with a controller than smashing away on your overpriced keyboard and filthy mouse, which you never clean, because you're disgusting. Let's face it, WOW, which is an ironic acronym by the way, is mostly focused on getting you to run around like a goon, team up with other poindexters, and then try and take down an enemy that looks like it came straight out of a child's coloring book. Except here, you didn't even color them in. All you ever do in Blizzard's MMORPG is walk anyway, so why do that with a mouse and keyboard? Even when you get into a fight, the game plays itself. It's the equivalent of a conveyor belt at a supermarket. Sure, it's kind of fun to look at, but you literally contribute nothing. You want to do all of that while hunched over as your face is right in the computer? No, no you don't. Get a pad and relax. Number nine, Counter-Strike Go. Do you know what I'm sick of? Giant babies going on about first-person shooters being better on mouse and keyboard because of accuracy. What are you talking about? Have you ever fired a gun? You don't take your finger and scroll along and then start clicking away on your intended target. You pick up the weapon of death and you pull the trigger. And you know what else has a trigger? A controller. If anything, people that decide to use a mouse and keyboard setup to play Counter-Strike Go are cowards. Cowards that are scared of losing their positive kill-death ratio because that's all they have. And then, then comes the nail in the coffin. Who was it that upset this delicate balance? A faceless assassin simply known as X490620. And how did they gun you down? Using a controller. So there's no denying it anymore. When it comes to playing an FPS properly, real gamers use a pad and stink of bravery. Number eight, Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 3. Some people say you can't even play Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 3 on PC with a pad. But you know what I say to them? You're pathetic. You're letting an inanimate object control your life? Bending over just because your big bad baby game said so? Go out there, find Mass Effect 2 and 3 and play it with a controller because that's the way it was meant to be played. It's obviously the best way to do it, otherwise Bioware wouldn't have released it on the PS3 and Xbox 360 for use with their respective pads. They'd have come up with some conjangled contraption that you attach to your head. But they didn't. They knew what was best and they executed. Besides, in Mass Effect, you're in charge of an actual human being. That's what Commander Shepard is a representation of, in case you're unaware. You don't move flesh with a mouse and keyboard. Doesn't make any sense. A doctor wouldn't whip out his Division Zero X40 Pro gaming mechanical keyboard to perform surgery, and nor should you. If in this case, the metaphor for surgery is about playing dress up in space. Number seven, Flight Simulator X. Pop quiz time. Does a pilot use a mouse and keyboard to fly a plane? The answer is no. No, they don't. Not only would they be endangering the lives of thousands of people, but they'd look like a massive geek. I don't want a human with the power of sky travel to look like that. I want style. I want grace. And I want buttons. All things you can associate with a controller. When you decide to give up an entire day so you can fly from London Heathrow to LAX, it's important to be as close to reality as possible. And ain't nobody tapping keys in the cockpit. They're using sticks, like on a controller pushing buttons, like on a controller, and not really worrying about what other people are doing. Like, you know, those who use a controller. Finally, if you hit some turbulence and start careering towards the ground, how are you gonna correct things? By frantically pushing the D key? 
No, you're not. You're gonna pull back on that glorious analog nub and steer your sky wagon back among the stars. That's the ticket. Number six, Dota 2. We all know Dota 2 is gibberish and that nobody knows what they're doing when they're actually playing it. People just turn it on and then abuse their mouse as if they're, well, you know, doing that thing people do. At night, when the mood is right, and the lights are off, and you feel good, and you need a release. I am, of course, talking about going to the gym. In short, if you're spamming your pointing device as Wizard and Demons fight, or whatever the hell happens in Dota 2, you're doing it wrong. Pick up a pad and stop being a schmeral. Number five, Armor 3. Armor 3 has more commands than I have awards. And trust me, that's a lot of commands. While you may think this makes prime keyboard and mouse material, you'd be wrong. It doesn't. A pad is far superior because let's face it, I don't want to learn inputs. I don't want to understand how the game is played. I want death and I want destruction. And the best way to do that is with a controller and just to mash all the buttons. It's not like there's any tactics or strategy to Armor 3. It's a game where you kick down the door, run in, and start 360 no-scoping some fools. They drop dead, you perform one of the many emotes at your disposal before strapping some C4 to another enemy's back and getting ready for a roller coaster of joy. It's basically Arnold Schwarzenegger the game, and he wouldn't be caught dead with a mouse and keyboard. In fact, he actually once said to me, he said, Miller, if I ever die, make sure I don't have any nerd paraphernalia on me. Whatever you say, Arnold. Whatever you say. Number four, Assetto Corsa. Newsflash, there's nothing sadder than a grown adult sitting in a racing chair. I mean, those two words shouldn't even go together to begin with. While you're racing, you're not in a chair. Your ass is wedged into a powerful seat. A seat so powerful, you can go hundreds of miles an hour and feel like you're traveling through time and space. Not in your bedroom pretending you're Lewis Hamilton. Come on! This is why a pad is obviously the right choice when it comes to a set of Corsa, especially if you're thinking about using a mouse and keyboard. No one clicks to go round a corner. That doesn't even make grammatical sense. Where's the fun in pushing shift to accelerate as well? Or tab? That's like buying an ice cream cone and just throwing the whole thing in your mouth. We all know you lick a 99 with a flake. And we all know you use a controller when it comes to racing games. Number three, Beneath a Still Sky. Yeah. I know that Beneath a Still Sky is a point and click game, and therefore, what better approach than using a keyboard and a mouse? Hell, you don't even need the former, you just need the latter because that suffices when it comes to pointing and clicking. But you know what you're doing there? You're taking the easy way out, like a cheap graphics card. Do you know how much respect you're going to get from the gaming community when you tell them you completed Beneath a Still Sky with a pad? It's like those speed runners. People love them even though it's pointless. You can be pointless too by attacking a point and click game with a controller. You'll be a hero, a warrior, someone who's not afraid to stare adversity in the face and say, I won't bow to you this day. I shall take my own path. So grow a pair and then do what I just told you to do. Number two, the Windows desktop. I've seen it, you've seen it, we've all seen it. When you're using your Windows desktop and you're swishing around the mouse and double clicking to open my computer whatever it is you do these days. It's clear then that you should use an Xbox 360 pad when navigating your desktop. You move the thumbstick to select a folder and then double tap A to open it. That's what we're all used to. You're taking the most common act of gaming and applying it to your business life, which means you're finally understanding what being a grown up is all about. Now go file those tax returns. Number one, FIFA 70. I mean, you can't argue with that one, can you? Nobody wants to play football with a mouse. That's just weird. Especially because that sentence can be taken two ways. Firstly, you just don't want to play it using your computer's peripheral. And secondly, no one plays football against an actual mouse. This isn't a Disney movie, it's reality. And reality states that this defenseless animal is going to be crushed under the weight of a thousand boots. That's it for this week. Go and think about what you've done and definitely pick up a pad to use with all your PC games. I will see you soon. Now don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more Miller Rapport episodes in the future and then like, share and leave a comment below.